Hello friends, this video on neat current electricity is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Question number 37. Find the equivalent resistance of the network shown in the figure between points A and B. Okay, so now when you look at this figure, the way it is given here on the screen, it is very diff difficult to find out which resistances are in series and which resistances are in parallel. So therefore, what we will do is we will draw a simplified version of the same circuit. So let us first draw these two points A and B because end of the day, we have to find the equivalent resistances between these two points. Now you see what do you have between A and B. So on one side, you have one R resistance which is directly connected between A and B right this resistance so let us first draw this resistance which is directly connected between A and B so there is one resistance which is directly connected between A and B okay what else do you have now you see that there are three resistances which starts from point A that means one end of all the three resistances are connected to A that means from A you have three resistances starting like this okay and then what is happening to the other end of the resistance so if you see the other end of the three resistances they they end up meeting each other basically right because this is just a line so this is just a wire so that they are actually meeting each other and then they are meeting B so basically all of these are meeting each other and then they are meeting point B. So this is the simplified version of the circuit. Now can you tell me that which ones are in series and which ones in parallel? Yes, you can tell that very easily. So now you can see that all these three resistors, they are in parallel. So let us first calculate R parallel, which is 1 by Rp is equal to 1 by R plus 1 by R plus 1 by R that is 3 by R or you can say that Rp is equal to R by 3. So now once you have calculated R by 3, so this R by 3 is in parallel with R. Therefore, 1 by R equivalent will be equal to 1 by Rp plus 1 by R. So this can be written as 3 by R plus 1 by R which is equal to 4 by R or we can say R equivalent is equal to R by 4. So this is the equivalent resistance of the network. Let's look at question number 38. Find the equivalent resistance of the network between points A and B. So here again you have a complicated looking circuit which is not actually complicated. So again what we will do, we will draw a simplified version of the circuit. So first what we do, we first draw the two points A and B between which we have to find out the equivalent resistance. Now you see that you have one resistance starting from A which in turn is directly connected to another resistance which is connected to B. So one resistance from A that is directly connected to another resistance which in turn is connected to B. And the same thing is there on the other side as well. That means you again have one more resistance from A which is connected to another resistance which in turn is connected to point B. Now you also have two resistances in between. Let us call this point as P and let us call this point as Q. So basically you have a point P here and a point Q here and on that you have two resistances like this. So this is basically the simplified version of the circuit. Now let us look at it. So here the value of each of these resistances is R. So looking at this picture, does it remind you of anything? So it looks like a weak stone bridge, right? Where you have four resistances connected in this fashion, right? And you also see that R by R is equal to R by R. So this is basically like a balanced weak stone bridge. And what happens in the balanced weak stone bridge? No current flows through this arm PQ. So therefore, no current through PQ. Now when no current flows through PQ, these two resistances, they do not play any role. They do not contribute to the circuit. So now when you have to calculate the equivalent resistance, you can just ignore these two resistances. So if you do that, in that case, these two resistances are in series. So R plus R, 2R, 
again these two resistances are in series so r plus r 2r and this 2r and this 2r are in parallel so 1 by r equivalent is equal to 1 by 2r plus 1 by 2r which is equal to 2 by 2r therefore r equivalent is equal to r so this is the equivalent resistance of the network let's look at question number 39 an electric kettle used to prepare tea takes two minutes to boil four cups of water one cup contains 200 cc of water if the room temperature is 25 degrees celsius if the cost of power consumption is rupees one per unit one unit is 1000 watt hour that is one kilowatt hour calculate the cost of boiling four cups of water okay so in this case first of all we will have to calculate the energy consumption in boiling four cups of water right so how much is the heat energy that is associated when a specific amount of liquid is boiled for example in this case that would be given by q is equal to mc delta t where q is the amount of heat that is absorbed or released m is the mass of that substance which we are heating c is the specific heat of that substance in this case c is the specific heat of water right and delta t is nothing but the change in temperature right so in this case what is the mass how do we calculate mass now since we are boiling four cups of water so four multiplied by 200 cc because one cup is 200 cc so four into 200 so this gives you the volume and we know that density is equal to mass by volume so mass will be equal to density into volume so volume is 4 into 200 cc this multiplied by density of water which is 1 gram per cc this gives you 800 grams which you if you convert it into kgs you get 0 0.8 kg so that's the value of m now what is the value of c that is specific heat of water it is one calorie per gram degree celsius which when converted into joules gives you 4.2 joules per gram degree celsius or 4200 joules per kg degree celsius because everything needs to be in the same unit right okay so we got the value of c now let us talk about the change in temperature that is delta t so if you look at this the room temperature is 25 degrees celsius and what are we trying to do we are trying to boil and boiling temperature of water is 100 degrees celsius so basically we want to increase the temperature from 25 degrees celsius to 100 degrees celsius so the change in temperature would be 100 minus 25 that is 75 degrees celsius so we have all the three values m c and delta t so let us calculate the amount of heat that is um, or the amount of energy that would be needed for uh, boiling these four cups of water so that will be equal to 0 0.8 into 4200 into 75 and this gives 252000 joules so this is the amount of energy that is getting that that will be consumed in boiling four cups of water okay now in order to calculate the cost of power consumption we will have to find out the number of units of energy consumption now as we see that one unit is equal to one kilowatt hour which is equal to 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 joules so knowing this relationship how many units of energy has been consumed in this case so the units of energy that is consumed in this case would be equal to 252000 joules divided by 3.6 into 10 to the power 6 which is 0 0.07 units so basically 0 0.07 units of power has been consumed for boiling four cups of water now we can calculate the cost of this boiling four cups of water now since the cost is one rupee per unit that means for one unit the cost is one rupee so for 0 0.07 units the cost would be 0 0.07 rupees so let if you convert it into passive so you would get 0 0.07 multiplied by 100 which is equal to 7 passive 
so the cost of boiling cost of power consumption for boiling four cups of water would be seven paise so see here it was a very simple problem which was directly based on the formula if you know that the amount of energy associated is mc delta t it's very easy it is just that you need to make sure that all the values are converted into the same unit because many times people do calculation and they forget to change grams into kilograms and they do end up doing the entire calculation and what happens you reach at a wrong result so it is important that you make sure that everything is in the same unit so with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson on current electricity now please remember the, this video is specifically for neat uh, examination or any other medical entrance examination where we have not discussed the theoretical concepts in much detail so for the theoretical concepts refer the physics videos on current electricity of class 12th physics on examfear.com once you have gone through all those videos then you can refer these videos and go through all the mcqs and the questions that we have solved understand the concepts and then try solving as many questions as you can and i am sure this video would have helped you see you all in the next lesson Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.